today I brought into work my Vara HW100 uh, air rifle. It's 177 rifle and on top I've got mounted my Hawk Sidewinder 30 uh, scope which has got a real thin milled up reticle and I think it's going to assist me later on in a challenge I'm going to attempt. Now for anyone who follows my channel on YouTube is in a room that has seen about two days ago a good friend of mine from the hunting life forum, David T63, uh, attempting a challenge in this very indoor range behind me. Basically what I did is I printed out five computer generated matchsticks on a piece of A4 paper and asked David to attempt shooting them, knowing that David's probably the best shot I know uh, and whatever score he'd get would be a great benchmark. Now next June, me and David are running the Hunting Life Forum charity meet at this very location, uh, which consists of basically a Friday till Sunday of shooting, barbecuing, having fun, chatting and passing on shooting knowledge between uh, people who turn up. Now we always like to run a few competitions, finishing with a big HFT series competition on the Sunday. Uh, so this is going to be one of the competitions, the smaller one before the uh, Sunday competition. And it's basically designed for the better shots of, uh, of the guys turning up, because there will be some absolute cracking shots turning up. And every year this meet's getting bigger and bigger. So basically, I tried it after David did it, and David did it in 11 or 12 shots. And like I said, he's an amazing shot. Uh, and I tried it with the BSA Ultra, which is way easy, accurate enough to actually attempt it. But the scope I had on top, the reticle was a little bit too fat, mate. It was a Hawk Night Eye, even though it's a good scope. As you'll see in a minute, because I'm going to zoom in and give you a close up of how thin and small these targets are, the reticle was just that little bit too fat on times 10 magnification, where I think this one is going to do fine. And I'm quite confident I'm going to do, do well at this. Now, we used this benchmark anyway, 11 of 12, what David scored. Uh, and we said, right, if, if people can do it in 15 shots, uh, they've done very well. If they do it in under 15 shots, and the minimum you can do it in is 10, because you definitely need 10 shots to complete it, you've done the exception. Uh, so, what I'm going to do now is set up the targetry, have a quick check zero to make sure uh, my rifle and scope are still singing on par together, uh, and then we're going to attempt the challenge. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to try finishing off by a, a new challenge, what was given to me only yesterday by another friend from the Hunting Life Forum, Matt Hooks, and he basically wants me to try and shoot some cart cases, uh, two two caliber cart cases, and try and get a 177 pellet uh, to go actually go in the cart case. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I think it's quite a challenge, but I will give it a go. I'm only going to try five shots uh, and see how we get on. Right, before I go on to attempt the challenge, I'm going to check zero on my HW100S with a Hawk Sidewinder scope on top. I haven't shot it for a few days and it's been in the car, I've done a few journeys, uh, and normally a scope will get knocked a slight bit off zero. Saying that though, this is the best scope out of all the scopes I've ever had for holding it zero, uh, but then again it should do at the price I paid for it. If I zoom in, you'll see there's an A4 piece of card and I've just drew tiny little black dot on it and that black dot is about the width of a 177 calibre pellet. Pellets I'm using today are my normal RWS super fields uh, and I'm going to do two or three shots just around that area to make sure my scope's not moved too much. If it has, adjust it uh, and get it bang on. You really need to be able to shoot one on groups at this range to achieve this uh, challenge or get anywhere near achieving it because the target tree as you'll see uh, is so small. Right, let's have a look, see how she's doing it. Bang on still through the same hole. I'll put another one or two through it. Pellet on pellet, not. Put one more in. There we go. Not a problem whatsoever. Really good scope. The thing I like about it is the uh, reticle's really thin on this uh, sidewinder scope, and I think it's really going to help when I go and do the uh, uh, challenge and attempt it. So I'm up in my zero. Just zoom out. 
as you can see, this fire racket just oozes accuracy, especially with these pellets. And I advise anyone who's got a HW100 in 177 to seriously give these RGBS Super Fuel pellets a, uh, a chance. A lot of people say they're exact same as Air Arms, Air Arms Field and FX pellets, uh, but I have been told that uh, when they come out of the die, there's a bit of a different process. Uh, happens to them once they come out of the die, and I actually think it makes a difference because I have tested Air Arms Field in this HW100, and even though they are really good, and so are the FX. Uh, these RWS Superfield actually beat them, hands down. Right, this is at the target end now. I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see three shots. Uh, easily covered by a five pence piece. It's not, not even a challenge for it, but it's probably only uh, half or even a quarter of the diameter of a five pence piece. Uh, and it gets to the stage I've found with this fire rack that once you've shot a few into a cluster like this, so there's three shots there, looks like one there, one there, one there, all touching, that you get this hole here, and as long as you put the crosshair in the centre of the hole, uh, basically, they just all keep falling in the same place, and it gives you a really nice aim point. And I could have probably carried on that group, probably to a 10 shot, and it would only just have been probably a little bit bigger, because uh, it is a very, very accurate rifle. Right, what you're looking at here is one of the target sheets we're going to be using for the indoor matchstick challenge at the Hunting Life Meet later next year in June. And to give you some idea how small these targets are, you're going to be shooting at, at 25 meters. I've got a 177 pellet in my hand here, and I'm just going to place it on top of one of the matchstick heads, and you can see uh, that the pellet diameter covers the matchstick head. If I now bring it down using a pen and centre it on the matchstick like so you should be able to see that you could probably get another matchstick to the right of the pellet and another matchstick to the left of the pellet and it would only just be covered uh, by the diameter of the pellet so these stakes here are really really thin and that's why I say to you you really need a scope with a real thin reticle because on times 10 magnification if you haven't you find that this stake here is actually smaller than your reticle and you haven't to guess basically so now you've seen how small they are and what we're shooting at we'll see how we get on Right, I'm ready to attempt now this challenge. And as I zoom in, you'll see that I've placed one of the target sheets on a piece of card to keep it nice and rigid uh, in between shots and not flap around on the peg. I'm just loading a fresh 14-shot magazine now to the, into the uh, HW100S. And I'm going to start off at the left-hand match head, uh, working away to the right and only moving across one once I think I've cut the line. Great, and that's a perfect bullseye. Right, the second marksmanship principles is the weapon must point naturally at the target. So what I'm doing here is because I've gone moved across to the right on the reticle, I'm moving the whole rifle now and then moving my body to the rifle. So I'm pointing naturally at the target. Four, and you can see it work because that's a perfect bullseye. And then we can get five out of five. And there we go, five out of five. What you just witnessed there, in reality, is me putting five 
shot basically through the same hole. So if I had a fired one, the other four would have gone exactly through the same hole due to the size of the matchstick head I'm shooting. And the recock now, and now the hard part is the sticks. Because these, as I've already shown you, are three times uh, thinner than a pellet in diameter and width. So starting off then at the left hand one. Still not cutting it. Yeah, that's cutting it. Three, two more to get. Not quite, I don't think. Yep, that's just cutting it. One to get. Same again, I'm going to move the rifle and then my body. Like so, you can see that works. Right, I think that's it done. So I'm going to have a look, take the magazine out. I've got one shot left in the magazine. So that means I think I've done it in 13 shots, which is really good. I'm going to zoom out uh, and then we'll look uh, closer by taking the camera forward and inspecting uh, each one of the shots. Right, this is a view now at the target end. The way I'm going to do it is basically pan and zoom and look at each one closely. You can definitely see there we've got a bullseye and it's broke the stick on the first one. Moving across, perfect shot on the stick uh, and broke the line. Third one, perfect shot on the match head and then it was the third shot uh, to actually break the line. So I actually lost, dropped two shots there. Could have done that 11 shots if I would have concentrated a little bit more. The next one, Bullseye again on the matchstick head uh, and you can see I've just broke the line uh, of the stick which counts as we've already said. And the last one, same again, broke the head on the matchstick head uh, and we've broke the line on the stick. So 13 shots to do it. So it can be done. Uh, that's me now done it uh, and David T63 done it. Uh, it is hard and even using uh, the thin reticled Hawk Sidewinder scope I've got on times 10 magnification, uh, the actual part of this stick here is only the thickness of the reticle. So anyone who's got a uh, scope with a fatter reticle than my Hawk Sidewinder, and I can imagine there's a lot out there are going to have problems and it'll be a case of just guessing. Right, before I call it a day for today, uh, I just want to try one last challenge and it was given to me by a friend of mine from the Hunting Life Forum called Matt Oaks yesterday. He gave me the idea after watching me shoot these cart cases uh, long ways up and base first is to actually try putting them into a piece of plasticine base first uh, and trying to get a pellet to actually go inside the hole. Uh, now I've got a 177 pellet here and hopefully you'll be able to see this without my fingers getting in the way. 177 pellet will just drop in uh, and fit so you can see uh, it 
just the right fit. Right then, I'll zoom in and hopefully you'll be able to see five pieces of blue tack if the camera focuses correctly yet and I pushed in the uh, cart cases base first so it's showing the opening probably fine with the kinetic energy of the 177 pellet hitting uh, the actual cart case it's going to knock it off but hopefully uh, I'll be able to pick them up and hopefully we'll have some markings of blue tack on uh, I've cleared the area so that if any do fall, I know they're going to be the ones I've shot at. So I'm going to start off from the left and go across to the right again. See how we get on. Same again, I've not got a bipod, the left bipod at home. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is turn the illumination upon the scope. That's it, so I've got a nice green reticle. a hit, hopefully it went in. shots and it wasn't a problem at all. Well I've managed to find all five of the cart cases. Uh, the first one here is empty but what you hopefully can see uh, if I use a bit of a twig is I've just caught it on the end so it was a hit. The next one was hit quite a lot better and it's put a right dent in it, but it looks like the pellets obviously beveled it in. Third one, done the same thing again. You can actually see where the 177 pellet has made the shape of the head there. The next one's done the same thing. Uh, just bent in the head. But luckily, the last one, or I don't know if it was the last one but we've got one here where it's bent it slightly but I don't know if you can see this on camera there's actually a 177 pellet jammed base first inside uh, so I managed one out of five which I don't think is bad really uh, but it can be done uh, it is absolutely jam packed in there there's no space around the edges whatsoever so it looks like it's gone in and it must have uh, expanded uh, when it hit the, bo the uh, bottom of the cart case uh, and it's there so it can be done so one out of five is not a bad effort